Today, we're gonna do our own solar system. We know you want your own solar system. You want that free power, baby? We're gonna play with some 240 volt wires and try not to shock ourselves, get some free power out of it. Let's go. So in front of us, we have all of our components. The big boy, the 295 watt solar system. Solar system. 295 watt solar panel. The star of the show, you thought that was it. This is it, the micro inverter. This allows you to string them all together and get the most power out of each one of them. Hell yeah. Here's your performance meter. It meters performance. AC disconnect. Big turn off. Turn on. This is for uh, mounting the actual racks and panels to the roof. This is the wire to connect all of the micro inverters together. Run it to your system. And finally, woo, combiner. This is where you combine your strings. So here we are on the roof. We're getting 24 panels at 295 watts each. That works out to about 7,000 watts. We're getting 12 panels on this south facing exposure and 12 more panels on this west facing exposure. So right now we're going to do some layout for those rails. Rails on those exposures that I mentioned. We need three feet from the top of the ridges to the top of our solar panels. So we're gonna lay that out, take our measurements, Get to work. So it's a little hard to tell, but we laid out our grid by doing a perimeter, measured everything out, put in the holes around the perimeter, and then we just ran our string line between each point to make a little grid. Then we just drill where the string lines meet and put our pieces down. After that comes the rails. Yeah, they only go on one way. Okay, they idiot proofed them then. On the DC, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the actual micro inverter. You use one fastener in the center in that slot. It slides into the top slot of this rail. And it doesn't even need to slide in, it actually drops in. Easy. Do you want me to hold it? So the full run of railing spans 20 feet, uh, but the railing sections that we have are 14 feet each. So we have these couplings that go between them and we'll stitch on an extra piece to the end. Okay, here's our first string, runs from the bottom set up to the end of the top set. There's the end of it, which will go to a J box and get ran off the roof to that combiner box. Drinking game, every time I say daisy chain, take a shot. So a quick difference between a traditional setup and the micro inverter setup. Normally you would just daisy chain each solar panel to every other one in the chain and then you would run that uh, DC wire to an inverter. With the micro inverter setup, you run a micro inverter for every single panel. So the DC solar panel wire then goes to the micro inverter and each one of those is daisy chained together. Uh, and at that point it's AC, that's what the inverter does. So right now we have all of our micro inverters laid out before we get panels on the roof. We're going to daisy chain each micro inverter in its respective string together and run it to the end. I'm watching. Here's the start of the second string. This one's only half a string. The other half of the string is on the other roof. So we'll run it down here. J box at the end of this guy. Then we're going to run this through some conduit to match up with the other half that's going up in a little bit. Another look at these micro inverters. Here they are. This is your DC connection 
for your solar panel. And this wire right here is the daisy chain AC wire. Solar panel here, AC there, to your J box, to your combiner. So just a quick overview of the difference between your central inverter versus your micro inverter uh, benefits and downsides. With that central inverter, you have to run low voltage to each panel and then all the way down to your inverter. So there's some voltage loss. But the bigger disadvantage is that it's kind of the idea that your chain is only as strong as your weakest link. With your central inverter setup, the string will only do as well as the lowest panel in that string. So if you have one panel that's in the shade, that whole entire string is going to suffer because of it. With a micro inverter setup, each panel has its own micro inverter and the output just gets added up between them. If you have a roof like this one where we have panels in different elevations where the amount of sun that each panel is getting varies quite a bit from panel to panel within the same string, you definitely want micro inverters. The biggest downside of a micro inverter setup is that it's more expensive. You have to have a micro inverter for every single panel. We have 24 panels on this roof, which means 24 microinverters. And the cost certainly adds up. But especially for this roof, the benefits far outweigh the costs. And I wouldn't want to do a traditional central inverter setup for this guy. We have our first six panels on the roof. We're going to get those connected and mounted and go from there. For fasteners, they just use these little bolts with uh, caps on the end of them that basically just pinch down on the panels and a couple spacers for the end pieces and while we got the dream team doing panels we got my dad doing layout here are the end spacers and back to the fasteners just clip these on And this is used at the start and end of our run. So we have our six panels on the bottom. That gives us some support on the end. Just like that, panels are on. Okay, here's our second set, second elevation. You see all the microinverters are ran and strung important step so these are the ac wires the daisy chain the micro inverters together before we hook the panels on it's important to note you do want to cap off this daisy chain wire because as soon as the panels get some sun they're working as soon as you connect those panels they're sending electricity through here so yeah cap these off because they will be live when they're hooked up to panels and just like that we have two elevations of solar panels we got 12 panels here, 12 panels there, uh, 24 panel system, 7,000 watts. Next up we need to run our wires, some junction boxes and some conduit and then run it down to the disconnect and the combiner and all that stuff down there so that we can actually get some power out of this. So we're back from the future. We did these panels a little bit wrong in the sense that when you wire them you cannot have the wires actually sitting on the roof. So this time we're going to use these clips to hold the wires in place off of the roof. We're gonna put the panels back down and then we'll be good to go. Easy as that. And here's what the roof looks like with the J boxes and with the conduit installed. An important note is that this kit actually called for three quarter inch conduit, but we used one inch conduit. This made it so much easier to run the wires through. And when you're pulling this many wires through three quarter inch conduit, it's just not fun. Go with one inch. It'll save you some time and struggle. And here you have the combiner box. You can see the three strings are the top two breakers, as well as the one on the bottom left, the red, black, and white. This middle breaker is the power that goes out, which then goes to the AC disconnect. This allows you to quickly turn your system on and off the power coming from your panels, then going out. 
Here's the performance meter without it installed, obviously. That's for the power company to do. And here is where it goes back into the panel. You can see our breakers clearly labeled up there for the solar system. Here's the conduit running down from the roof to bring those into the combiner box. Lastly, we have the system all buttoned up. Here's our panel that we shot. Here's the performance meter. Again, the city needs to install the actual meter. Here's the AC disconnect closed, as well as the combiner box closed. And sitting on the wall, it looks pretty neat and organized, almost professional, almost. And we're back to show exactly how much this thing is made. So right now, it's a little bit overcast. The sun's poking through, just barely. And the system's making 3.6 kilowatts right now. So throughout the span of a day, it'll vary depending on where the sun's at, a little less in the morning and evening. But uh, you can expect with this right now to get about 30 kilowatt hours a day. And we've had it running now for about six weeks and it'll cycle through and tell us that it's made 1,375 kilowatt hours, which you know you do the math, that's roughly about 30 a day. So we're tracking right there. That adds up a lot, especially with power costs increasing, depending on where you're at, this could be a significant reduction to your bill. And you saw how easy that whole thing was. Highly recommend the micro inverter setup to get your maximum output on your entire roof. And as you see, it will directly save on your power bill. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And feel free to comment with any questions you have if you're doing your own home system or you're just more curious about how this works. Uh, thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.